Hey family, welcome back to Jack's Making It Home. We are a lifestyle channel that produces videos based upon home improvement, cooking, and also traveling. If you guys have been following us, then you know that we have just started our gardening journey. Um, it has been quite the adventure so far. Uh, we've released a couple videos showing you guys how we went about constructing filling and also planting our uh, crops here in our raised garden bed. If you have not checked those videos out yet, then we highly recommend that you do. Today's video, we're gonna be doing a continuation of that journey. One critical component to any healthy gardening journey is ensuring that your produce is receiving enough water. With that being said, we have decided to take our journey to the next level and begin capturing rainwater. Capturing rainwater has been around for thousands of years and has numerous benefits to both our crop and our environment. In fact, we saw one of the oldest rainwater harvesting systems when we decided to visit Petra back in December and that dates back to the 4th century BC. For today's build, we will be utilizing the Earth-Minded DIY Kit. For tools and materials, of course, we will be needing the DIY kit itself. We will also be needing our drill, a level, sandpaper, which is not a necessity, but we're gonna be using it, a uh, tape measure, a Sharpie or any other writing utensil, Phillips head screwdriver, and then of course, the barrel itself. We have a 48 gallon food grade barrel that we will be repurposing. And uh, this kit actually works with barrels that have both a sealed top and then also those with removable tops, which we have. One great thing about this earth mined DIY kit is that it is fairly easy to install onto any barrel that you supply. Again, we will be repurposing a 48 gallon food grade barrel and it is imperative that you try to find a food grade barrel so that we can eliminate any chemicals that were potentially utilized. Another great thing about this kit is that when installed correctly, it diverts the water back down your downspout as normal when the barrel is full, as opposed to allowing the barrel to overflow, creating a mess. One downfall that I saw with this kit was that there's no filtering mechanism. I did see one individual take a pair of pantyhose and put it on to his diverter before putting it on his downspout. But the downfall that I see with that is that if it filters out something large, it can literally clog your downspout and restrict the flow of the water. So instead, we are going to be putting some type of mesh filtering system onto our watering can so we can filter the water as it comes out of our spigot on our barrel. Luckily, we were able to find a barrel that has a removable top. So in the rare case that our spigot is clogged or it's just not flowing as efficiently as possible, we can literally take off the lid, clean whatever is blocking out the spigot, and we are good to go. Let's go ahead and jump into this installation. As we go about showing you all how we're going to construct our rain barrel, we definitely want you to refer to and follow the instructions that were included with your kit. The first thing that we did when we got our barrel to our house was to give it a good wash. Even though it is food grade, we wanted to ensure that our captured water remains as pure as possible. The next thing is to consider the location of your barrel. It needs a flat, sturdy, level surface. Uh, water is about eight pounds per gallon, so as you can imagine, as your barrel fills up, it's gonna get pretty heavy and it's going to need a strong foundation. For you, this might mean digging, this might mean some pavers, it might even mean an optional stand. For us, we are going to be placing ours on the corner of our small deck here. Something to consider is that the taller your barrel is, the faster or the more pressure that your water will have coming out due to gravity. The next thing to consider is the proximity to your downspout. This kit will allow for a maximum distance of 28 inches, a minimum distance of 6 inches, and it will work with downspouts with the dimensions of 2x3 or 3x4. This is everything that the Earth Minded DIY kit came with. You shouldn't need any additional parts. Now is the time where the customization comes into play. We have four options when it comes to putting the bottom of the barrel together. You can have just the drain assembly at the bottom. You can have the drain assembly at the bottom with a uh, spigot above it. You can have just a spigot at the bottom, or you can have the spigot at the bottom with the drain assembly above it. We are going to be moving with the last option of having the spigot at the bottom and the drain assembly above it. For the most part, we will be utilizing the spigot to fill our watering can. In the rare case that something happens to our spigot, I'd prefer to have our drain assembly above it as a backup. 
So we are officially getting started with this build. What we will do is measure from the bottom. We're gonna go three inches up. That's gonna be our mark for our spigot. From there, we're gonna go nine more inches up, so 12 from the bottom, and that will be our mark for our drain assembly. We're gonna use our included one and one quarter inch hole saw to drill those holes out using our marks as the center. And then we're gonna take a little sandpaper and try to smooth that out a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So I wouldn't be too late. was jumping, singing songs, and dancing through the night. I didn't think that I would ever see your face again, but I was wrong. So we got our two one and one quarter inch holes all drilled out with the included hole saw. We then took our 120 grit sandpaper to smooth it all out to encourage a proper and efficient seal. And that is the next step, is to install these seals. And they were included, so we're gonna use the two threaded seals that came with the kit. Um, they say to bend them and shape them into a U or a heart shape, and this will make it a little easier for them to go into the barrel. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Now that we have our two threaded seals installed, we can now thread on our drain assembly and our spigot. You may need to introduce a little bit of soapy water just to lubricate the seals, making it a little easier for you to thread on your uh, drain assembly and your spigot. So our drain is officially on. Definitely take your time and make sure that it's going on straight so there is no cross thread. So as you guys can see, we have our top off here. Thank God for an easy ratcheting mechanism that uh, actually locks and unlocks our lid. Um, if you can find one with a removable lid, I definitely encourage you to go ahead and grab it. I think it'll make your life a lot easier. Obviously, we're new to this, but it has already made our lives easier. It is time to uh, move on to our fill hose. Ours is going to be about 90 degrees off of our spigot and drain assembly and about four inches from the top. The direction calls for three inches from the top, but they also make note that uh, it needs to be on a flat or evenly curved surface so that the inlet has a proper seal. Um, we have a little lip on ours, so we're gonna go about an inch further down and put our hole right there. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Strolled out town this evening when I heard music echo through the night. So now that we have our mark mate for our fill hose, we're actually gonna drill this one out with the included one and one half inch hole saw. The cool thing about the directions that you're going to receive is that they are visual diagrams related to the uh, individual steps that will visually show you which size saw you should be using. So you just take it out of the pack, line it up, and make sure that it matches before cutting out the hole. So we're gonna cut out this hole again with the one and one half inch hole saw. We're gonna take our 120 grit sandpaper to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna take our inlet seal. This one is not threaded. And we're gonna put it in that same U or heart shape and then plug it in on the hole. And on the street, the crowd was jumping, singing songs and dancing through the night. So 
now it is time to move on to the next step, which is installing our diverter into our downspout. It is critical that you install your diverter at the proper height, so I encourage you to refer back to your instructions that we talked about earlier. If you install it too high, then your uh, water may not be able to divert back down your downspout, causing your barrel to overflow, creating that mess that we talked about. If you install it too low, then your barrel may never get any water. So for us, we're going to put our level or straight edge on top of our barrel, make a reference line on our downspout. From there, we're going to measure down three and one half inches because remember our fill hose is at four inches. This is going to ensure that our diverter is at least one half inch higher than our fill hose. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Oh, how I wish this night would never end so we can keep on got our hole cut out on our downspout with our included two and one eighth inch hole saw and now it is time to install our diverter. When doing so, all you have to do is pinch the sides, push it straight in, don't twist it or anything, and make sure that the cup and the arrow is facing up. So let's go ahead and jump into that. <music> So the next step is to use our included self-tapping screws and attach our diverter to the downspout. With the self-tapping screws, you don't need to pre-drill any holes, simply screw them in. On one of them, I'm going to include our winterizing cap um, just so we don't lose it. Um, once we have them screwed in, what we're gonna do is take our fill hose, attach one side to our diverter, take, attach the other side to our inlet, and again, we're using that soapy water to reduce friction and make it a little easier. Once we have that done, we're gonna fill it up with a little bit of water from the hose the, just the house regular spigot and uh, we're going to test all our seals and make sure everything is functioning properly so let's go ahead and jump onto that step this evening when I heard music echo through the night the same old songs that I heard the night before so I started running so I wouldn't be too late So we filled our barrel above the threaded seals. Don't see any leaks. Everything is looking good. And as you can see, our water is running efficiently out of the hose. We did connect a water hose to our spigot and we will continue to do that in the future so that Shannon can fill her watering can from the ground and does not have to hold it up to the spigot and you know it's getting really, really heavy. We are really excited about this addition to our gardening journey because now we can capture that rainwater, which is gonna be really beneficial to our crops in our garden, our lawn, and anything else that we decide to use it for. We hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We hope that it was helpful and educational. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. And until next time, be blessed.